Hello there, and welcome back to module eight. So now we move to lecture two, multi-phase flow. So this is another huge black box in CFD. So just to start with this slide, so Turing's modeling, as you can see, is on top of every type of physics to be simulated, including multi-phase flows. Therefore, the importance and is the one, the first one to focus. And again, and invite you to please read the theory, get get familiar, learn more about turbulent flows. So as in turbulent flow, when dealing with multi-phase flows, we can take an approach that resolve all the scales, okay, like DNS, but it's too expensive, okay? Therefore, we need to use mo uh, models. And depending on the multi-phase system, there are models very specific for the multi-phase uh, multi physics involved, okay? Multi-phase flows in general, are heavily modeled okay and we see here well we have this diagram and we have here many types of physics so we so far we have addressed now single phase all speed aerodynamics but now here multi-phase it can be subdivided in separated system and dispersed system later we're going to see and at the same time dispersed system can be separated in Euler Euler approach and Euler Lagrangian Lagrangian approach. Then we have also here hydroacoustic combustion, magnetodynamics, fluid structure interaction, and much, much more. Okay, so everything depends on Turing's modeling, and then multiphase get very, very complicated. So what is a multiphase flow? So just to give you the basic definition, no, it's a flow consistent of more than one phase component and have some level of phase separation at both molecular level, and this is very important. Okay phase separation above molecular level. Uh, Multiphase flows exist in many different forms in nature and industrial application. For example, you can find you, you can find it in these combinations, gas liquid mixture, gas solid mixture, liquid solid mixture, immiscible liquid liquid mi mixture, and also you can have liquid liquid solid you know, more than two phases. <clears throat> so multiphase flows, are present in many industrial processes and natural systems. And I have to say the most interesting applications that I deal with are multi-phase systems, okay? In my personal opinion, this is something that is worth you know, learning well how to do, how to, to, how, how to solve, you know, do CFD simulations, multi-phase flows, okay? So example of the applications, so you have these classical applications, probably you're familiar with this, okay? So you have the interface, air water, and resolving stuff like this is relatively easy. Or river flows also relatively easy, okay? Contrary to what you might think. Also this application corresponds to multi flows where you have cavitation. It's heavily used also in, in water treatment, okay then in nuclear generation of nuclear energy you have a lot of fermentation and food processing chemical reactions okay in nature like volcano er er eruption stuff like that snow debris transport you have it all around okay so <clears throat> in nature industrial uh, applications it, it is widely widely di diffused so simulating multi-phase flows is not an easy task okay first you have uh, turbulence model in there, okay? You need to deal with that, but then what it will make it even more com com uh, complicated is that you have more than one, m one working fluid, okay? They are transient in nature, okay? So I have to say that 95% 90, of the time, multi-phase flows, you need to do to solve it fully transient, okay? It's rarely when you find an steady solution of multi-phase flows. Uh, the existence of dynamically changing interface, okay, as things are moving, okay, and you have more than two phases, make it even more trickier. You have significant discontinuities, okay? So you see that discontinuity, for instance, between air and water, that is a very strong discontinuity, something equivalent to a shock wave, and you need very elaborated uh, numerical methods to solve that. Okay, it's, you also have complicated flow field near the interface. You have interaction of small scale structures, stuff like bubbles and particles that are interacting together. Many <clears throat> different space and temporal scales. You can have also dispersed phases and particle-particle interaction. You can have also mass transfer and phase change. You add to that turbulence and make things really, really difficult. So just to, to make the distinction when we talk about 
multi-phase flows, we talk about dispersed system and the separated system. So in the separated system, okay, you have the two phases separated. Okay, you have a clear interface that separate those th those two phases or three or four phases or whatever. So solving for this separated system is relative easy. Instead, when you have <coughs> A uh, dispersed system, you have a dispersed phase, okay, a phase that is dispersed in a <coughs> in a continuous phase, and this is tricky. So look at that here. You start to have uh, droplets, bubble st stuff like that, and as you want to resolve those droplets, bubbles, or particles, and I want to point out that they can be in the size of microns. To resolve that, you can imagine that if you want to resolve some sort of 10 microns, you need a very small mesh. So there is where the modeling part enter. Okay, so the resolving this persistence is tricky. Resolving this is really easy because you have a clear interface and you just need to track that interface and that that is all. You need to solve one set of equations. So the approaches, generally speaking, like in turbulence modeling, you can take the fully resolved ap uh, uh, approach very fine mesh, resolve your navier stokes equation, but this is incredibly expensive, okay? Out of the scope. Then you have the other approaches where we start to add models. So we can have the Eulera Lagrangian approach where we have Lagrangian particles that they move with an Eulerian phase, a continuous phase. And when we do this one, we, we can have one way, two way or four way couplings. So that means that the flow move the particles the f or the flow moves the particles and the particles at the same time modify the flow and also when the particles are moving they also can rotate you have all that momentum so these are the different levels of cop coupling and then also you can have the Eulerian Eulerian approach that you solve two or more coexisting fluids okay fluids so this is the, the computer uh, <coughs> this is the classi classification that we have and as you go in this direction, you increase your computational power, but you reduce your modeling requirements. So here there is no modeling requirements. As you go down, the modeling requirements increase a lot. Okay, so <clears throat> how we can treat that one? And for instance, when you are doing the dispersed case, what you are doing, what we're doing. So remember when we talk about dispersed case that you have a small droplets or bubble, whatever dis dispersed in a continuous phase. So you can solve this. This is very small. Okay, we have seen that you need super fine meshes. So what we do here is that we model that. So this actual behavior, physical behavior that you're going to find at many bubbles, when you are doing the simulation, you take the cell and you are going to average that. So you are not seeing those simulations. You are not going to see the, the actual see the actual bubbles. You are going to see an average solution. So this is the approach that we take. And to do this, there are models. The other approach that you can take is resolving this one using the, the separated the, the separated approach. But you know that, for instance, to solve this, you need very small cells. Also, you need to take into account when you have this the, this interaction that these bubbles or droplets they can interact between each other. So you can have this mechanism like coalescence, breakup, and wake entrainment. This stuff you need to take into account. This is what is known as population balance models and stuff like that. Okay, so everything enters into <coughs> into into multi-phase flows. Okay. So when using you know, the approach called the multi-fluid or, or mixture approaches, you now you need to define uh, many models. Okay, how the how that interact. So among all those models that you have, these are the most important ones that are, or the the ones that you will need to set up most of the time. You now, so you have the drag force model. You can you also going to have lift force, which is the lateral force. So see that this bubble is kind of going up. So you it's going to experience this drag force, but this lateral force. Also, you have virtual mass when the bubble is moving, it's displacing also some volume of the other phase. So you need to take into account that and also turbulent dispersion. So these are the most common ones, but I have to point out that there are many more models. So this is where the complexity enters when you are setting cases. I would, would like to point out that we're studying this, the basic theory, but I'm going to show you a tutorial. I'm not going to show you this because this is part of something more advanced. I'm going to show you how to set up a case of separated flows, okay, which is the starting point. Then you have the other approach where you have particles moving with your Eulerian phase or your Eulerian mesh. 
And this is relative easy because you inject the particles and then now the momentum of the flow is going to, to move the particles, but also the particles can have the, their own momentum. So they move and they, they you don't solve this in, the, in your Eulerian mesh, this you solve the tracking. So for this one, you are solving all the equations, you know, the equation of motion of the particles, you know, the newton euler equation of motion, and that's all. So this is relative easy, okay, so is you have one, two, three, ten, a hundred particles, you can solve a hundred ODE easily. If you have one billion particles, that is a problem. Okay, because solving one billion ODE is extremely, uh, extremely expensive. So again, there are some models in the cases that you have a lot of particles. So see that how all those models enter. So let's talk about the Greek, Greek scales and talking about all these different uh, interfaces that you have now in these cases. So see that you can have this is a separated case. This is a separated and dispersed case, okay? It's separated here in the interface. So see that you have a clear interface that you can track, okay? And you can have a mesh about this size to track this one. But then as you go below, see that you start to have these bubbles. And then since here, it get trickier, okay? Because those bubbles, up to a point, you will be able to solve that bubbles. And below that, that, that point, you cannot solve that. You need to model that, okay? so. Here you see clearly the separated interface and also the dispersed interface. So we talk about free surface, we have system scale, something large that it is relatively easy to track. Then you have large, large bubbles about the system scale, okay, can be tracked as well. Then you have medium scale bubbles that to some point might be able to track, but then since it goes to micro scales and meso scales and everything needs to be modeled here, okay. So different approaches in the Eulerian Eulerian BOF, okay, so in the Eulerian Eulerian you can separate it, BOF or dispersed system. So the BOF is what is called volume of fluid. It's the one that you can use to, to solve the, the separated flow. So here you have non-interpenetrating continuum. So both phases are continuous Eulerian and fluid properties are written on either side of the interface, okay? There is no averaging. So we are going to solve one single set of PDEs, and then by using an additional equation, we're going to know where you have one phase or the other. Okay, so this is the BOF approach for separated system. And <clears throat> let me put it here for separated system, okay? Let me add that note. Then you have the dispersed system, the Eulerian Eulerian. So here you have interpenetrating continuum. You know, those phases, so they meet. Okay, so you're going to have a continuous phase and a dispersed phase. And this is the problem that you need to put some modeling here. Okay, and what is interesting is that you can have a continuous and dispersed phase, but those phases, you can have also phase inversion. So in one point, the phases are going to invert. Okay, so again, you have model for that. So what we do here is this phase weighted average. Okay, something similar to what was done in, in, in turbulence modeling. Okay, you add an average there and you compute everything in terms of the average field. So what we do here is that now we solve a set of PD, PDEs for every single phase. So here you are just solving one set of equation, and then you have an equation that is doing the tracking. Here, for every phase, you are going to solve a, a set of governing equation plus all the interface mo uh, models, okay? <clears throat> and then we have the Eulerian Lagrangian. So the Eulerian Lagrangian is just particles and any of, and any of these you know, combinations, okay? So you have particles moving with the flow. So what the particles, they are, you solve the motion by solving the ODE, ODE, the equations of motion of that particle. So if you have a lot of particles, then you have models to reduce that computational effort. But here you can use a com any of these options to transport this particle. So just to show you some applications, so separating systems, so see that this is relatively easy. It seems, it seems very elaborated, no, something, <coughs> something fancy, but it's super easy to solve, okay? Then we move more particle, more uh, separated flows, but see that now we're reducing the scales here and we're using something called adapt, uh, adaptive mesh refinement to track the interface. But see that in one point you have a small bubbles and this is, let's say that you are taking here the fully resolved 
approach up to a point but this is not uh <coughs> this is not economically this is too too expensive but here you see the interactions of many bubbles and what is happening so what we do the other approach in the disperse in the disperse system is something like that so look at the experiments and see that you have here some bubbles so so there are some large scale bubbles and there are some small bubbles to resolve this one is too expensive if you want to do something like that so we use the, the the phase average method and see that you see here this interface this is this bubble column but here you are not looking at single bubbles you are looking at the average solution surprisingly this works really well okay if you calibrate the model because there are many models involved and see here in this figure there is a combination of many models and you you see that there are very different results some of them are completely wrong some of them are, are right and this is the best combination so here in this case we calibrate it to get now the best results and see that we have experimental results and the numerics it's a very very good agreement okay so this is basically what we're doing here in this dispersed approach heavily model okay there are a lot of models involved there and then we have this other approach so remember when you have particles and you have billions of particles solving that is too expensive so what you can do is taking those particles at a, as a continuous phase so this is what what is called eulerian granular ktgf or kinetic theory of granular flow so it takes it does something similar to the kinetic theory of gases now something a similar approach but the particles are simulated as a continuous as you can see that is a huge model okay there are many variables there that you need to cal calibrate but you can get a very good agreement with these experiments okay so this is perfectly valid as well then also you can in this case the Lagrangian particles so see that you put all those particles so you have flow coming here okay so flow coming and is moving the particles and all these particles between are interacting between each other okay they are interacting between each other with the walls they also modify the flow and the flow modify the trajectory of the particles so this is the fully coupled approach as you see this can be also very expensive okay so in this case we have something about 40,000 particles so it can be solved but as you keep adding more particles since become expensive so it might be better to use this kinetic theory of, of granular flow something like that so see that this one is having kind of a similar behavior to to this one okay so these are all the approaches that you have okay so now let me show you a few you know equations what we're solving so in the bof approach the volume of fluid for separating system and just for, to simplify you now i'm going to show you just the incompressible isothermal equations but have in mind that you can have also compressible or temperature dependence so basically what you solve is these equations one single set for the navier stokes equation plus models so see that you add surface tension model plus another source term you have the gravity effect it's very important okay you have hydrostatic pressure so you take that component but up to here this is navier stokes equation and then models specific to this and then you solve this equation this equation is to get a tracking of the interface okay so this one will tell you it, it usually is bounded between zero and one so it will tell you where you have zero you have phase one and where you have one you have phase two and then according to that number you are going to assign properties see that you have properties density viscosity so if you have phase one use property of phase one if you have phase zero use property of phase zero and that's all okay so this is how it works so it's relatively easy okay this equation we have seen this is similar to the pure convection equation and we have seen that that equation even if it is easy we need to use very good numerics so here there are specific you no know, methods implemented you now to solve this equation to get a good a good <clears throat> a good solution okay so what is happening is this what i say you now that zero you have one phase one you have the other phase and all the values in between will represent the interface so usually 0 0.5 would be properly the, the the interface and according to the phase that you have you are going to choose a phase like this okay so if you have one you put your one here and you use these properties if you have zero you put it here and you're going to use the other properties as simple as that 
Okay. Then the Eulerian Eulerian approach, the one for this persistence, you are going to resolve a set of equations, including the equation for the tracking of the interface for each phase. So the K here represents phases. So if you have 10 phases, you will have you are going to solve 10 sets of equations. So you see that it will be it starts to become very expensive. Okay. But also see that in these equations, here you have these models okay so this is like in the bof the surface tension but then you have nk here that this represent all the momentum transfer models okay how all these phases interact and when it comes to that there are many models involved I already mentioned that you can have drag forces lift forces uh virtual mass turbulent dispersion the shape of the of the particles also there are models okay you can have pers perfect spherical bubbles or you can have elliptical ones so there are many models involved there and things get tricky so then we go to the last one that is the eulerian lagrangian governing equation so in this frame framework you can you have a continuous phase that is solved in an eulerian reference system meaning no you just continuous and then the particles or the dispersed phase is solved in a lagrangian reference system okay the particles can be transported passively or they can be coupled uh with the with the fluid <coughs> with the governing equations okay that is they can modify the the fluid, fluid field the particles motion is calculated by using the, an ODE for every single particle, no? the Newton Euler equation of motions. Uh, these particles can interact with, with, with boundaries, they can escape, bounce, stick, or for a wall field. So these are models that you're going to put there because you can have this in elastic or elastic collision and stuff like that. Uh, this formulation also can take into account particle interaction and mass transfer. And this is important, mass transfer, because usually this approach is very often used for combustion. You have combustion and you inject the fuel and the fuel is particles and then at one point they can uh, evaporate, they can, they can trigger the chemical reaction, whatever. So basically what you are solving is this equation, Newton Euler equation of motion, plus any of the previous Eulerian formulations. Okay, you can use a single or multi-phase with no problem. So you go multi-phase things get more complicated, but this is what, what you are doing. Okay. So in open form, just to talk, just to end here, we're ending. In open form, there are many interfacial mom momentum transfer models implemented. Okay, this is when it comes to this persistent. Okay, so here you have the location of those libraries. So I invite you, you know, to to visit and see the models. But things can be really complicated, and I don't want to go into detail because this is a training that we do a whole day dedica dedicated only to this. You need to get half very good foundation foundations okay so the multi-phase solvers that you you are going to find in open phone so or the ones that you are going to use most of the time because there are many of them there for the bof approach is called interphone okay so if you are going to use it separated system interphone is the one to use so you're going to use eulerian eulerian as you're going to, 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 to take the Euler and Euler approach for this persistent, these are the solvers that you have available. Two-phase Euler phone and multi-phase Euler phone. This is, we're talking about open phone nine, by the way, same chance with older versions, since we're, we're a little bit more messy, but now they are standardized and everything. Then for the Euler and, Euler and granular <coughs> theory of, uh, <coughs> for the kinetic theory of granular flows, you have this one, two-phase older phone, which is the same as this one. So there are some differences in the, into the input dictionaries. And then for particle, you have these two, okay, DPN and MPPIC phone. So the difference between these two are the models, okay? So they, they are using different models. So this is all, okay, for this brief introduction uh, of multi-phase flow. So now we're doing to do two tutorials, but basically we're going to focus into the B, into BOF, okay? So if you're interested in knowing more about this one, probably we can discuss it this in, during the uh, Q&A session. So that's all for this introdu introduction to multi-phase flow. See you in the next videos. Bye.